Hi, everyone, and welcome to our webinar, Extending Quality Processes to Your Global Workforce. And this is the third in our series on Viva Vault Quality Docs. And my name is Amy Leung. I'm the Marketing Associate at Viva, and I'll be the host. So just a few points before we get started. We will be having a about three to five minute Q&A at the end of the demo, depending on our time. So if you have any questions at any point during the demo, please use the question section of our GoToWebinar panel to submit it. And we'll be monitoring these as they come in and answering them at the end. And so with that, I'm going to hand this over to Jeff Sharan. He's our sales engineer for R&D. Jeff, are you ready? I am. Thank you, Amy. So yeah, my name is Jeff Sharan, a sales engineer for the R&D here at Viva. And uh, this is the third part of a five-part webinar series. Just put up a slide there that shows two more upcoming webinars, one on May 28th and one on June 25th. So if you've liked the content you've seen so far in our previous two and this one today, please sign up for the next ones or maybe inform some of your colleagues who would be interested in that. As you can see, there's a link right here that you can go to to uh, register for those. And we look forward to seeing you on more of these in the future. But that said, I'll jump into the, uh, the part here where we're going to begin uh, to talk about Viva Vault. And just to recap what we've shown on a couple of previous uh, presentations, um, you know, this is really the Vault platform that everything uh, in terms of our applications are based on. And what's nice about the Vault platform and rather unique, generally speaking, is that unlike a few, you know, previous generations of systems where, you know, they, they could be used in various industries beyond life sciences, maybe like oil and gas or automotive, so on and so forth. A lot of times all of a sudden you came into the life sciences world and you had to take a, a deep breath because all of a sudden you had to figure out a way how to kind of retrofit this thing, right, and bring things like part of compliance signatures or PDF publishing or a robust audit trail and all those areas. And what's nice is that Vault, from the platform itself, right from the get-go, has all those things that you would expect from a compliance and a productivity standpoint built into the platform. And thus, we don't have to retrofit this, and we can then take that platform and really extend it with these various applications. And there's things like promotional materials that we can manage inside of Vault that a lot of our customers are doing, and even medical, medical communications. Uh, we have some customers in the, in the clinical world who are using it for trial master file and even investigator portal. And of course, people you know, are using it for submissions. We're a little bit upstream from a publishing tool. But all that, that documentation that you can think of that goes into that is also something that could be managed in Vault. So it's really a digital asset library at the end of the day um, that, can, that can handle a lot of different content. Today, in the continuation of this webinar series, we're going to talk about quality docs and you know, the way that we can manage quality documentation in there. Um, three main things that you know, hopefully you'll see as I go through this today. One area around accessibility. Uh, what's nice about Vault, of course, is that with an internet connection and an internet browser, just having those two things, I'm really able to use the system. Of course, I need to use an even password to go into it. but if you think about that, what's, what's nice about that is that I could be on a PC like I am today, but I also could be on you know, a Mac, could be on a mobile device, an iPad, so on and so forth. It has an internet connection, internet browser, I'm good to go. And so we're really allowing people to work the way that they do in their private lives by collaborating with folks on different devices and, and not having to worry about what operating system and, and, and web browser they use, but rather you know, you know, being able to have the freedom to do that bringing that into the, into the content management world and allowing people to do that in their work lives as well. The consumer web design is hopefully something you'll see today. The whole aspect around being able to find data uh, and, and things easily uh, rather than you know, systems of the past which were arduous to, to, at best to be able to go out and maybe put my arms around all, all kinds of data that I wanted to find. Why not leverage something like what Amazon does where they have millions of products and with a search a few filters, I'm able to find exactly what I want. We kind of took a step back in terms of designing this and said, why don't we bring that type of a concept into document management, into content management? And hopefully you'll see that as I go through that today. Finally, everything I just mentioned in terms of the platform, these applications you see here, and you know, the, the ability to easily find things and access the system, it's all brought to, to our customers via a multi-tenant cloud-based solution, which really means that everyone is on the same version. Of course, data is segregated, but on the same version and um, application layer of, uh, of Vault. And thus, we can really focus our efforts on innovating and bringing new features in a lot quicker than legacy systems could have. And that, there's a lot of other benefits around the multi-tenant cloud that, that, that come to mind, too, in terms of the way that we can uh, you know, really help with lessening the validation burden uh, to our clients and so on and so forth. And so these, these are things that we'll go through uh, and, and touch upon, and hopefully you'll see as I go through this today. So next slide, I just talked about today's presentation. And really, the, the theme 
of today is going to focus around being able to collaborate in today's global um, workforce and the global uh, setup that we have, you know, especially with our client base and people that we're, we're talking to that could be future clients. I remember joining the workforce, you know, 15 to 17 years ago. And a lot of times collaboration at that time meant me getting up and walking down the hall and talking to someone. And when we really wanted to get fancy, we'd send an email or something like that. And of course, technology is moving so fast and the times are changing. And not only are, we, you know, are folks collaborating now just with people with inside their own four walls, not even necessarily just with people in their same organizations who may be across the world, but even with people outside, you know, third parties that they work with, whether they be CMOs, CROs really in suppliers, anyone that they want to be able to be in contact with. And with previous generations of systems, that wasn't always the easiest thing to do. I remember being a young consultant, working with some outside uh, customers, carrying two or three <laughs> laptops through an airport because I had to have you know, that particular laptop to work with that client, had to jump on a VPN and things like that. And of course, what the cloud does is free us once again to be able to be on any device anytime, anywhere, and with, with the proper permissions, be able to go in and see things. And, that, and the way we do it evolve, as you'll see, is it's not an all-or-nothing proposition of opening up the whole entire system to someone externally, which, of course, would not be pragmatic at all, but rather limiting what they can see and only what you want them to see. And I think, more importantly, having Vault in the background manage that such that end users are just free to go about and perform their tasks and, and, and what they want to accomplish. And so that's what we'll, be, what we'll be addressing today. So the next part all goes into the actual Quality Docs demo. And before I jump into that, I just want to show a few of the roles that I'll be uh, working with today. So it's kind of a busy slide, but it's actually pretty simplistic. I'm going to start out with a guy by the name of Ken Quality. He's a director of quality. He is a Vault user. What that means is he has a username and a password that can go into Vault. And being a higher level guy, he has higher level user rights. He can see a lot of documents across the enterprise. Makes sense. He's director of quality. He wants to be able to see things in many places. And he can perform a lot of functionality, like create and upload. Uh, look at dashboards, look at reports, so on and so forth. We'll contrast that with a guy by the name of, in the lower left corner, Rich Reviewer. Now, he's part of the same organization as Ken, but he's a little bit lo lower level in terms of his quality associate. He's still a Vault user, having a username and password, but he can at least see documents you know, for his site. Now, of course, this is generally speaking in the example I'm providing. We could open it up so that he can maybe only see certain documents that are sites, but for our demonstration purposes today, this is how we'll think of him. And, you know, he can create and upload new documents and look at dashboards and reports, too. Uh, but once again, he would only be able to report on what he's allowed to see. Third guy here is Bob External. So this is an external user. This isn't someone that, that works for the same company that Ken and Rich do. Or rather, he works for a, a third party. But they work with him enough where they say, you know what, we're going to give him a vault username and password, and we'll see what he can do. But being external, it makes sense. We're going to make him very limited in what he can see. In fact, he'll probably only be able to see one or two pieces of content, just the ones that they want, want him to work with. He can only review, and he can't see dashboards. He can't run reports. He can't create things or upload things. And I'm going to touch upon these later on, so you don't have to memorize all this right now, but just giving you a flavor of what we're going to go through. The final guy that we're going to see is this Jeff CMO. Imagine that he works at a contract manufacturing firm. He's an associate there. He's not a Vault user. And historically, the way that this would have worked is we would have been stuck kind of with, all right, figuring out a way to get this guy documentation, either physically sending it to him, emailing it to him. And, of course, what happens is we lose control outside of the system. We're going to show a way that we can at least you know, track and manage what this person sees and for the length of time he can see it. And uh, hopefully you'll appreciate the power of Vault by going through all these examples today. So without further ado, let me jump over to my web browser. And as promised, I'm going to start out with this Ken Quality guy. So I'm going to load in uh, his credentials, his username and his password. Once again, internet connection, internet browser is all I need. I happen to be on Google Chrome today, but you know I could be on Firefox, Safari, IE, so on and so forth. I'm on a PC, could be on an iPad, could be on a Mac, so on and so forth. So what this brings me to at the very beginning now is the ability to look across various vaults. And you know, there, there could be a regulatory vault, there could be a clinical vault, like I talked about with all those applications. What's, not, what's nice is that we're able to search across those many vaults. I clicked into the quality area because that's our focus today. And what this is going to bring me to is my home screen for Ken Quality. And there's no tasks here. And we're going to see what the home screen means in a minute as I begin to workflow some items through. But notice how he has the ability, as I promised, to see the reporting, dashboarding, to create, and to upload things. He even has the ability to, to work as an admin and jump over to our admin tool with this click right here. Now, where I'd like to start is in the library. And it's in the library where Ken has visibility in the vault. He has visibility to 255 documents. 
So this is you know what he's able to see, and we're going to contrast this with the other users in a minute. Now, he one day says, you know what, I want to create a new document from this template. These drop downs are completely configurable, but basically he says, yeah, it's a quality system master document. I want it to be an SOP. And yeah, here's the one template that we use in our organization. If I picked other uh, things in the drop downs there, I would have gotten the, the chance to pick other templates. So it's nice. It kind of prevents me from selecting the wrong template at the wrong time. And it you know, kind of forces me to select the right one. So let's just say this is a quality doc, false, uh, SOP. And then notice how we have some of these other fields here. Now these are kind of important in that uh, a number of ways. One way is this is going to help me manage and find what I want in here because of the fact that this is the way that things are cataloged. But then furthermore, we can even leverage things like, hey, if I pick the Chicago site, this might be a way that I allow Rich to be able to see, if you remember our friend Rich, the quality associate, this is how we'll allow Rich to be able to see this particular piece of content based on the fact that this is for Chicago and not for London or not for Dubai or not for another place in the world. Or maybe it's by department right here. So we can leverage this information to kick off specific workflows. And that's how Vault in the background can really manage all this. And the end users don't have to be concerned about that. Notice how some of these fields are in yellow and some are in white. The yellow are mandatory fields. They have to put some kind of value in there in order to uh, save this. The white ones are actually optional. And what's nice is that those optional fields can actually become mandatory later on in my process if I want to. So if you think about it, it's, it's, it's nice. It's not an all or nothing proposition of having to know all these values. But rather, hey, let's just get this document going, and then if we need to, when it gets approved or when it gets uh, becomes effective and things like that, okay, now we need to know this other information. So here's my Vault uh, Docs uh, uh, SOP that I brought into here. If you notice, it's in the draft stage. I'm going to dive into this particular item. Notice how we have this little uh, default document numbering that's going on. It's a rather simplistic convention of SOP in a six-digit number. That gets incremented by one every time something comes into there. We can get much more uh, creative with various prefixes and suffixes for this, but it's nice that it auto-numbered that for me. And now I have, as you can see here, my document that I'm starting out with, three pages long, and it's just a template, of course. Now, what's nice is that I'm viewing this in my inline browser, and I don't necessarily have to have Word on my device in order to see this. That's why this, this Vault knows this is a Microsoft Word document. But what we've done basically is cobbled together a source document, which was that Microsoft Word document, and a viewable rendition of that. And so at this stage, if I said, okay, it's time to start you know, authoring this perhaps, notice how I could go to the source document and download this. Or I could even come over to here as another option and check this out. So the checkout is actually going to enable me now to automatically open this up in Word. And what you're going to see here is my generic document here, this template. And this is where I can begin to author this, right? So, you know, here is uh, my purpose. And, you know, I could go on one of these uh, headings down here and perhaps, uh, you know, add some text here. And you get the idea. I'm in here authoring this document through here. And at some stage, of course, I would save this. And, of course, I could close out of this. And now the level set, I'm back involved. Now I'm Minor version point one. If I ever want to see who checked this out, oh, Ken Quality did, and that's why this is still where it's at. Now, if I come back into here and say, okay, let's let's check this thing back in. Notice how Vault is smart enough to know where my document's at. It will bring it in for me, and now minor version point one is going to go to minor version point two. My page will refresh, and Vault will automatically render this latest version of my document as a PDF, and you know. It's, kind of nice because I don't have to necessarily have Adobe Publisher on my machine at all. I don't have to have Adobe even on my machine to be able to view this in my online browser. And thus, I'm able to view this particular um, piece of content here, which happens to be a Microsoft Word document, inside my inline browser. And that's why it could be on any device, as I had mentioned before. Now, at this stage, this is where I could say, OK, you know, I would actually like to be able to begin to send this out to some other users. And now we're going to begin to go through and actually talk about these other gentlemen that I mentioned uh, earlier. So if I go to back to this right here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send this out to review to these two guys, to Rich and to Bob. So one of them works for our company. One of them doesn't work for our company. However, he's someone that we've hired as a consultant for after he's outside of the firewall. And so at this stage, let me refresh this, and we'll see the latest uh, viewable rendition here when this comes back up. And from there, we'll be able to get this process going. So if I go to my drop-down right here, 
notice how I can now begin, you know, kind of a review uh, cycle here and things like that. So if I say, yeah, I'd like to start out my review and approval by simply clicking on this right here. Notice how this brings up this particular box for me. And at this stage, I could say, okay, here's my reviewers. Now, of course, I could pick a group. And notice how I could do that. Who's in that group? Well, I could highlight over it and see exactly. And I could also go in here and dial into this. So I could say, you know, Rich being one guy that I told you I'd send it to to keep this simple. And also our guy, Bob External, he's right there. Now, for approvers, I could be in to put in other folks here. And I could, of course, even put in myself as maybe because I'm the QA person or something like that. Or I could pick a group and put on a due date. Now, keep in mind, normally what a lot of our customers do is we automate this part, meaning that the values that end up going into a lot of the properties you saw me pick, that's what will dictate perhaps who the group is or who the person is. But just trying to keep it simple today and show this uh, in a rather automated or a non-automated fashion here. But once again, you could actually go through and do it this other way. Now, if I go back to my library right here, what's going to happen is that I'm going to be at this particular item. And of course, I'd be able to see you know, various documents perhaps that I had. Now, one other thing that I could do, just to show you another way here, is if I go to here, and I'm going to just go to the side, you can also upload content into here. So if I go to upload, I use a template before. If I had a document on my desktop that I wanted to use, notice how I could drag and drop this into here and see how it brought this over to here. I'm going to maximize the screen again. And then you can say, you know, I don't, if you don't know what the, the information is, you can classify this later. Or you could say, no, I happen to know what this is. This is a quality system master document. This is for an SOP. And begin to catalog it. And use something from your hard drive. So just showing you two different ways there. One being, hey, I have a template that I want to use. Or maybe there wasn't a template there, but in this one circumstance, I said, hey, you know, I, I really have something that uh, else that I'd like to use as the basis for this. And I could begin to use that here. And of course, you know, I could go through, catalog this information here, spell out what my uh, required fields are, and then of course go down here and actually save this particular item. Now, of course, the screen's going to refresh again, and we're going to have another piece of content in here. So just showing you a few different ways that this would work in terms of checking this in, checking this out, and, and moving on. But what's nice is that you can be really flexible in terms of leveraging templates that are out there. Maybe you just give permission to people to do that or having the ability to upload this as you just saw me do here. And of course, then we'd be able to see, you know, what was what was brought in, into here. Here's a different, you know, seven-page document in this example. And once again, just to recap, the way that I could start out my review and approval process would be to send this out, select people like Rich and my Bob external guy, and be able to, once again, assign folks the same way you saw me do before, either by group or by a person, and really get the ball rolling uh, with this particular process. So, you know, if I'm happy with this one right here, I can actually click on Start, and, you know, you get the idea of the way I can go through this. Now, let's start to play the role of these other folks. So, if I log out of this, and if I come back in now as a different user, you'll begin to see a different experience here. So, for example, if I say, okay, I'm, let's be rich this time, rich reviewer. And we'll type in his credentials here. And upon doing so, I can log in. And of course, it goes without saying, he's going to maybe have a, a different spectrum of vaults to look across. You can see this guy's really involved. You can see quite a few of them. I'm going to dive into the one we've been working with, which is this quality one. He's going to have his uh, home screen. It's going to show some tasks. And then I want to show a couple things, one being this. Notice if I go to the library how he's limited in what he can see. So remember I said with Rich, he's in our organization. But he can only see things across one site. And this is why he's not able to see those 200 and some odd documents, but rather only 87. Now, if I go back to my home screen, this is where he would be able to, you know, dive into this one. Let's go into, into uh, you know, one of these here, for example, that just came across recently. And just to show you the way that he would say, okay, I want to be able to go in and uh, perhaps begin to mark this up. And so he says, you know what, I want to annotate this. And he begins to look through this. So let's just keep this simple for the sake of brevity. But maybe he highlights, you know, that particular section there and says, uh, yeah, is this uh, purpose correct? You know, and he put a question mark there. And we can save this. And notice how he puts this note here and highlights that. Some people like uh, this where it's actually an overlay. And you can actually move this overlay around. Now, to keep this brief, let's just say that he basically says, you know, at this stage, 
I'm I'm complete. I, maybe maybe he's done with uh, with what he's working on right here, and he'll complete his step. And he's going to say that you know this is kind of a quality review. Now keep in mind that at the same time, and since I'm only one person here today, I have to log out and log into this other gentleman. But at the same time, in real time, Bob External, who once again does not work for our organization, but he has a vault username and password. He could actually come into here and perhaps, you know, you know, work with these folks here. Now he opens this up, and the first thing we're going to see is that he has a different experience, not just from what he can see from documents, but also what he can do from a functionality standpoint. So yeah, here's the two tasks that we sent him out here just recently. But hey, wait a minute, where's the reports? Where's the dashboard? Hey, he can't create anything. He can't upload anything. No admin tool available to him whatsoever. So you can see right from the get-go, we've limited him. Not only have we limited to him from a functionality standpoint, but even more importantly, look, we said, all right, you can see this Viva training video, and then the two uh, SOPs that we assigned you, you can see those. And that's it. There's 200 and some odd documents out there, but Bob External limited to seeing this. So the power of Vault is that by leveraging property fields and knowing people's roles, we're able to really dictate who can see what, but we can still collaborate with, with them uh, without the arduous uh, items and, and, and uh, things that we'd have to do in the past. And, you know, in this case, they gave him the power to be able to go in here and annotate. And so if I open this up, notice how he could go in here. And maybe he says, hey, where did uh, Rich put his uh, notes? You know, you can imagine it was a seven-page document. What if it was a 200-page document he wanted to address a note? He can get this 50,000-foot view. Oh, page two has a note. Dive into it. Here's the note right here. Let's go to the note position. And he might say, you know, yeah, this is something I want to reply on. This is something I want to collaborate on. So is this purpose correct? No, you know, we need to... Uh, you know, redo this. And so he writes that in there. And, you know, right away we kind of have this conversation going on of these two collaborating together. So we gave him, since we gave him the rights to be in here, he could also even come into here, lasso a section, for example, and write a note about something. Um, he could even, for example, highlight this area and even mark this as something that he does not want into here and could say, you know, remove this. So a lot of flexibility, a lot of different uh, ways you could do it. I think the main point being, of course, once again, that we're doing this in a controlled manner with someone who's not, not necessarily in our organization, but yet, you know, he really control what he sees, what he can do. So, he, of course, he could go in here, as you would expect, in the same way, close this out, and say that he's done, you know, with this task. Now, on my PowerPoint slide earlier, you know, I had had another guy here, this Jeff CMO, and I talked about the fact that He's not a Vault user. So you may say, well, what are you going to do, send him an email or something like that? How could we possibly collaborate with him? Well, let's go back to Ken Quality and show the way that this would work. If I log out of the system, and I'm going to kind of come back in as Ken, and because Ken has a little bit higher user rights here, let's log back in. And let's find an effective document, perhaps, that with this contract manufacturer, you know, we want him to read or look over or just be a part of for any reason. And we want to share content with him. But once again, he's not a Vault user. So that's going to be the challenge that we're going to overcome here today. So if I dive into the library, and I'll find an effective document you know, that I have right here that perhaps I'd like to send over, this quality procedure. And so this one's already in effective state. What I can do here is actually go down in this dropdown, and because I, I can see this, I can go and say send as a link. And notice what happens right here is that we have this add as a recipient. And now I could type in people who are in my organization or find someone that's in my organization. But I could also add, and I have his email address here, he's jeffcmo311, and he's got a Gmail account. So he's completely outside of it. And notice how Vault says, yeah, hit enter since he's an external viewer. And what's kind of nice is this. We can toggle this on or off and say he's allowed to have a viewable rendition of it from a timeline. Hey, you only got 48 hours to see this. Or yeah, you, know, you can look at this for the next month or whatever. And then we can even write a little message to him in his email such as to say, you know, uh, you know, look this over or whatever. And so upon doing this, I could actually send this out. And so now I've actually, you know, I've sent this out to this person. Now if I dive into this particular document, what's interesting is that unlike the, the scenarios I talked about before where it kind of goes outside the system, whether it be on a thumb drive or physically or, uh, you know, by emailing it, notice this. We have a robust audit trail with the uh, vault that exists on every document. I can actually see who I sent this to in the audit trail with this. Now, furthermore, you're going to see as Jeff CMO interacts with this, how the audit trail is going to, going to uh, follow that. Let me show you how that works. I'm going to go over to uh, 
this dumb email account I have, and sure enough, here's the one I just sent over. This is on Eastern U.S. time here. So now you have to imagine, I'm the Jeff CMO guy, right? And I get come into here, I get this email, I look at this. Yeah, remember I wrote, looked this over, I got the message that I wrote to him. This is all configurable. Here's the link. I'm going to click on the link, and lo and behold, this is going to bring me to the document. But notice how it's a skinned down version, for the lack of a better term. You know, it doesn't have all the bells and whistles of the vault with uh, the metadata fields over here and a lot of the other things. It just says, hey, here's the document. Now, we gave it permission to download this. We didn't have to, but you know, a PDF rendition, I'll do that in a second. Now, I'm going to jump back over as Ken Quality. So, it's, this is important to note. I'm Ken Quality now. And if he went in here and looked at the audit trail, notice how this is following what's happened. Oh, Jeff CMO viewed this. So, this is outside the system, but the vault can audit trail that he looked at this thing. And as you would probably expect, now I'm back as Jeff CMO. If he goes here and downloads this, notice how it'll produce it for him in his tray here. I'm going to open this up. Shows for me, yeah, nice header here. This is completely configurable. We got things like the document number, the name of the document. If I scroll down, we'll see things like you know, it was withdrawn by the system on this date. It's only valid for seven days, so someone's not running around with this thing uh, in October or November or something like that. You can see everything here, and as you'd expect, you know, we even have part 11 compliance signatures that were manifested in here with the username, date and time stamp, and a reason for the signature that are here. Excuse me, if I jump back over to here, now, once again, I'm back at a 10 quality. Notice when he goes to the audit trail again, yeah, he's going to be able to see that we sent it to him, that it was viewed, and now, hey, he downloaded this as well, and it's all date and time stamp. So this is a nice way to really have at least some kind of control with people who don't necessarily even have a username or password in the system. And keep in mind, I only gave them 48 hours to view this thing. In fact, if I go and click on that, you'll see this here, the fact that, that this document you know, has an expiration date on it. It's actually over here where it talks about it. It, it expires on, on this date. Could have given it longer, could have given it shorter. But once again, if he tried to go into this on May 18th, he's not going to be able to see anything in here. So that's a nice way that we can work with various different users, whether it be one that's in our organization and that we want to limit what he sees, but he's still got some functionality. Someone like an external user who, you know, we only give him one or two documents, and then someone who's not even necessarily has a vault username, but can still go in there and at least uh, get a link and interact a little bit with, maybe see some content that we want him to see, but, won't, but we're able to at least track that. A final item I want to get to before I show you, or before I address any questions you might have, is, uh, you know, dashboards. I'm in here as Ken Quality, and so it's nice, you know. An example would be, look, I'm able to go into this global area right here of the dashboard, and I can look across, really, the enterprise here. And this, this is all configurable, but this is showing, hey, what's the status of my documents per facility? And so these, these are the ones we have in our organization. We can actually slice and dice this data a little bit differently. I could actually come in here and say, I just want to see Chicago, for example. You, know, you saw that as one of the sites there. And it shows me a pie chart of the document status just for that one site. And even here, you know, we can do things like look at, does anyone have any overdue tasks? You're looking at approval here, but this could be review. It could be periodic review. It could be any task that was assigned and it's overdue. And if I said, hey, I wonder what's going on here with these three, I can dive into this and get an idea that um, who the people are that, that are overdue perhaps. Okay, Gary Approver and Patty Approver. If I expand these, I can go to specific documents that are overdue, who, whose name is on the list, and remedy, remedy it in the fashion that I would like to. So it's a way that, once again, we can look at things globally and local, locally just via dashboards. And with that, I'm going to ask Amy if there's some questions, and we're almost uh, up against our time. Yeah, definitely, Jeff. Thank you so much. Um, actually, one quick question came in, and uh, let's see if we can get this done uh, in our time. But have you experienced any issues with security? That's the question, and maybe any clients that might have given some feedback on that. Yeah, sure. So I mean, it's really uh, you know one of the one of the powers of this is actually the ability to really increase security. And I'll, I'll give you a couple of examples. As I could think was asked there. So. You know, one item is, of course, all of our customers being in life sciences audit us, and the comments we get back a lot of times is, you know, they can see the economies of scale that take place because of the fact that we're able to invest so much into security and hosting this in the cloud, that rather than having, you know, 50, 60, 100, whatever, um, implementations of this out there and each client being responsible for that, that rather we can really do it uh, in, a, in a very strong way, in a stronger way, because we're, we're doing it once and, and, and across the enterprise and across the organizations, for that matter, uh, with so many clients. And so 
that that's one of the pieces of feedback that we get. Another one is you know, a client just asked me probably about five weeks ago, or it said to me about five weeks ago that you know they really saw in this and in, in, in the past when they had a VPN and people had to be on a certain device and everything like that that and if, if, if their folks wanted to see something at home, what they were doing in, in turn was putting things on thumb drives or emailing it and stuff like that. And of course, what happens? Well, that's outside of the system, and so. You know the dashboards and reports that you saw me do. First of all, you wouldn't get any metrics back on that. And furthermore, this kind of illusion of this iron fortress that they thought they had with a VPN was kind of gone because now the documents outside of the system they could go anywhere and they couldn't track it. He said he could see by looking at Vault that at least, yeah, there's uh, the ability to track things uh, with users that you just saw with the add to link. Uh, the, the robust audit trail is there, and even that whole part if you. Uh, we'll go back to the beginning when I mentioned uh, you know, the consumer web model. Because the system's so easy to use, it tends to have a higher propensity than previous generations of systems because of the fact that people are drawn to it to use it more and don't try to go around the system as much. And so they have a higher uh, acceptance rate, which once again keeps them in better compliance uh, and um, you know, control over that. So that's, uh, that's the way that's been addressed. Thanks, Jeff. And if you could actually pop up that screen with some of the contact information for me, that would be fantastic. Um, but that seems to be all the time we have. Thank you, everyone, for staying that extra couple minutes. If we didn't get to your question, we will follow up with you after this webinar. But just wanted to remind you to head over to our website, where you can sign up for this next demo in our series. It's going to be called Simplify Role-Based Readiness. That's Wednesday, May 28th, 2 p.m. Eastern Time and 11 a.m. Pacific Time. So thanks, everyone, for joining. We look forward to seeing you again soon. And here's all the contact information if you have any questions that you would like to send directly. Take care now.